Hello everyone, I'm back. My name is Paula and this is the Stitched by Mrs D podcast or video. I don't know why I feel weird about saying podcast but I do. I think it's because I think it's all about sound rather than video. I don't know. Anyway, this is my video all about um, knitting, crochet, just generally making stuff. Um, I've got a Kofi shop where I sell the things that I make. I make um, baskets and project bags for knitters and crochets, but of course you can keep anything in them. You don't have to keep knitting and crochet in them. I also make teddy bears, um, bunnies. I just thought I haven't deleted anything off my phone. I don't know if this is going to fit on here, but we'll see, won't we? What else? Uh, all sorts of things and this week I've got I've been making some velvet bags which will be in my shop on Thursday but I'll show you those at the end just in case you don't want to hear about that and that's fine I like hearing about um, anything really look at those little glasses aren't they sweet Jasper they're yours aren't they I normally clear this bit up a bit, but I appear to have left everything out. I've got this lovely little basket of kittens. It's actually Lizzie's, but she's she left it down here, so I've left it out. It's so sweet. Look. I had a really good dream about kittens the other night, but I was a bit worried about what I was going to do with them all. I dreamt that I... Uh, I don't know, I found some... And then there were just more than I expected. So I said last time, didn't didn't I, that I was going to try and do this every week. And I was all ready to film yesterday. But um, Lizzie ended up having an unexpected day off of school. And Meg didn't go in for her study day. Uh, she couldn't be bothered <laughs> to get out of bed. And she's going to ask today whether she actually needs to do them. I don't know. Yeah, Lizzie's school, she got there in the morning and then they had a security alert and they, all the kids come back again. So she was supposed to be going on a, a trip to another school to take part as a mathlete <laughs> rather than an athlete doing maths and she'd volunteered for that. But that didn't get to happen and she was sort of relieved, a bit disappointed, but but I think she was mostly relieved that she didn't have to do it. I've got Lillian over there. She's biting her toenails. She shouldn't do that, really. She shouldn't bite your nails. Doug's in the kitchen standing by his bowl. I've had to put his um, sign back out today because he's been laying right in the middle of the car park. I always say car park, but it's a drive. In the middle of the drive, flat out. So he looks dreadful, so I've had to put the sign out. Pam's down the end having another sachet of food and Ian is out in the garden. I've started to see him when I go on my walks with Lillian in the morning when we go behind the house. He's started to sit on the wall and look at the river. So I have to walk past like this so he can't see me. Because he, I, I worry he'd jump down and follow me. He is now one. He had a lovely birthday. Oh, I've got a bit of hair on my face. Yeah, he had a lovely birthday. He got a box of cars, which he enjoyed tapping about. And it's quite sweet, because every I know it's just me seeing things that aren't really there, but every time he goes outside in that area of the garden, he'll always sit where the cars are. <laughs> he doesn't play with them very much, but he, uh, yeah, he had a lovely birthday. James made me laugh. So his birthday was on Saturday and Friday night, James said to me, come on, really annoyed with myself. I said, why, what, what have you done? And he said, I know I'm going to wake up in the morning and say happy birthday to that stupid cat. And uh, I said, well, it is going to be his birthday. He said, yeah, I know, but I don't do stuff like that. And he did. He woke up and said, happy birthday, mate. He got, um, I bought some chicken breast for him and Doug and Pam and Lillian to all share. They all had it on top of their food and that was very nice. He is very delicate when he takes stuff out of my hands. So is Pam. They um, 
put their little paws around my hand and eat it where a dog turns into some sort of Douglas here he is into some sort of wild animal when he eats food like that come up here come sit no he's gone he's just gone running back through there yeah he turns into a wild animal when he has anything but cat food I'm on a tight schedule Johnny is meeting his girlfriend in town and then they're coming back so I've told them to give me about three quarters of an hour to an hour I've just had to write on a piece of fabric and I've sent him in the fabric shop 0.5 meters please <laughs> and it was like oh and I said he said he went out the door and then he knocked on the window to come back in I said what what are you doing he said I'm back forgot my bag I said what do you need a bag for put your stupid fabric in <laughs> They'll know who he is. They've seen him go in there with me before. I wanted to show you something. Oh, but I can't remember what where it's from, though. I'll put it in the description box at the bottom where they're from. So I told you a while ago about Lizzie getting a pair of socks for her birthday, which I got Ian's face printed onto. I can't remember where it's from, but I'll find out and I'll put it in the description box if anyone's interested. But you can, and this isn't paid or sponsored. These are just some stupid thing I've bought and I'm telling you about. Um, Yeah, you can get anything printed on them, like your friend's face, anything. But I got Ian print. Oh, did, did that just go in my coffee? I got Ian's face printed on a, on socks for Lizzie. Look at his face, isn't he gorgeous? And you can pick the colour and everything, but that's Ian. Yeah, I got her those for her birthday from Ian. So, um, I don't know what I was going to say, <laughs> but I think I've mentioned these, and here they are. Anyway, shall we get on? I've got two finished things. Uh, I've got something that I've picked up again and something that I've done a little bit more crochet on. So I'll get started. Now, I've... St oh, dear. No, I do know. I've star finished a pair of socks for James. I've been reading my book in the garden. And because it's been quite warm. And these have been my book knitting. I don't tell you, do I, what I'm reading? Because I don't want to know. <laughs> like, I've, what, there have been times when I've mentioned before a book that I'm reading and people have said stuff like, oh, keep going, there's a really good twist at the end. But I don't want to know if there's a twist. A twist is a twist, isn't it? And if you know about it, you expect it. So I don't talk about it because I don't want people to tell me about twists or whether... I don't know, I just like to, I very rarely actually leave, read the blurb on the back of a book. So I do judge a book by its cover. And I've started to go to, um, oh, never mind. Have I told you I've started to go to the library quite a bit? I feel like I'm getting new books all the time. I knew that wasn't going to be very nice coffee. I haven't put enough milk in it. Right, so here we are. These are for James. I make him quite a lot of socks and he loves them. He wears them all the time. These are, now I've got a ball of it here. This isn't the one, but it's Stylecraft Head Over Heels. And I know that the colour is called Hike. And here we are. Look, we've got two of them. I don't match up the pattern on these because there's not a lot of point. James isn't that sort of person. And if he's not that sort of person, I'm not either. So I, I really liked making these. This has got quite a long pattern repeat, hasn't it? And you see, it goes... I can't even pick up where it... Yeah. So that's how long it is. From those stripes there to those stripes there. But I'll tell you what, that bit there seems to knit really, really quick. 
Can you see it's got little black lines and just above it there are little grey lines as well, little grey speckles. I really enjoy when that bit comes around. Look, I don't know if you can see it very well, but I really like that. I like knitting with this wool. I've heard some people like say that it's not their favourite, um, but I don't have a an issue with it at all I think it's really nice and James likes it too I made him a pair in the colour called New Mexico I think I showed those to you a couple of episodes ago are they episodes I don't know what they are but these were very lovely so they will go off to him today so this is an advantage for him if I do this every week he's going to get more stuff isn't he he's not going to have to wait these are absolutely covered again in these little bits off of my tree of course this got really fine blossom and it's now all starting to go a bit crispy and fall on my head I make James socks on a 2.75 millimeter needle 72 stitches and I've started to do 12 rows for the cuff which is just enough really and then I just go by sight for the rest of it. I tend to put in a square heel turn just because that is what I have got in my head and I don't need to look at a pattern for that and then I do this toe where you do the decreases alternate rows and then every row after a little while I can't remember what that's called either but I just um, with his stuff I just go by what's up here rather than use a pattern oh my neighbour's calling me I'm just going to have to wait for that to end so I've got her name up on the screen at the moment and I can't even see my face, but this is just going to have to end because I can't hang up and I can't answer it. So it's just going to have to ring. So you'll have to excuse me a minute. All I can see is this bit of my face downwards. Oh, right, she's gone. I don't know what it'll be. I think I do know what it'll be. It's not one of my joined on neighbours. Oh, you know, I told you that my neighbour has done a really good job of doing the garden. Well, Doug now thinks that the little bit of garden that he's like titivated and made lovely, he thinks that's his own personal toilet. So I have to keep going out there and picking it all up um, before the oven, before my neighbour can see it. So after I'd finished those, I really enjoy getting James to pick his next ball of wool for me to make. His socks from and he has got his own stash down the end of the house and he has picked this one of course we have got a local pride event coming up and I'm going to make him some socks out of this so that he can wear them when we all go this is now I've got two balls of this I bought this one for James and then somebody sent me my own personal ball of it for my birthday. So maybe I can make us all a pair. But I am really interested to see how this is going to look in the blanket that I'm going to show you in a minute. So this is what he's picked for his next pair of socks. And this is again Stylecraft Head Over Heels. Show Your Pride, designed by Stuart Hillard. And I think that this pattern here, this was designed by him too. So that's what he's picked for his next pair of socks. Lovely jubbly. So I just mentioned a blanket, didn't I? Now when I finish a pair of socks for James, I'm sure you already know this, but there might be someone new here. I take what's left over and I put it in this bag here and I'm using all of this to make him his own blanket to take to the beach which makes me a bit nervous I have to say and it's all made out of every leftover that I've ever had from his socks 
and I put the whole ball in as well whatever's left goes in so these are what I've done since I last saw you I think I would just put that purple in and then I did this and then this one last night I got Lizzie to pick that colour for me I quite like ran people randomly picking it for me as well the, the next colour to go in and I got James to do that because I've just finished that one and he's picked that so that's going to go in next but I don't know how many I've chained across to start it off or anything like that I'm afraid I just went by that rug again I've got a rug in my living room which would just cover you up perfectly so whenever I'm going to crochet a blanket I just go by the width of that and just chain that amount and whatever that is that's what I make a blanket out of look at that in the middle don't it look like a, like I was going to say it does look like little teeth doesn't it <laughs> that was a stupid laugh won't it I put a going back to Ian I put a picture of him on Instagram for his birthday and everybody was saying how handsome he was and saying happy birthday and I was ever so proud of him <laughs> I could talk about Ian all day and quite often I do me and Lizzie look at pictures of him Lillian are you going to come and say hello today she's been on a walk this morning what I call a stubborn walk we shall only go her way but never mind that's fine of course this is a rough old blanket like I can feel it there it's not very soft but that's okay for him that'll do him lovely that will oh my nan's aerial and sky box is all sorted out everybody you'll be pleased to know the window cleaner had accidentally dislodged a wire so that's all sorted out so her viewing pleasure has resumed thank goodness Oh, I put the royal mugs away. I watched Troop in the Colour. Um, and then last week I changed them over. So I'm on to my spring slash summer mugs now. Start with this little fella. Isn't he cute? Oh, I'd love a fluffy duckling. Just to like, go like this on with my nose. Now I'm hoping that I did what I thought I was going to do. Yes, I did. Now, I told you last time, didn't I, this is another finished thing. I was going to start making the next instalment in the Curious Handmade, Handmade Sock Society sock collection. And I finished them. So these are called the Feather Vein Socks. Let's have a look. At the pattern down the front. upside down there you go you can see so you have a little bit of cable going on down here a little bit of cable in the middle and a little bit of cable on that side as well now you're supposed to change the direction of this cable in the second sock but I didn't do that because I I just didn't these are for Meg because she absolutely loved the colour of this wool, which I do too. It's um, Regio Premium Bamboo. 45% wool, 30% viscose, 25% polyamide. Here you go. Now I've looked this up and I think this might be discontinued because where I found it for sale... It's quite often been on offer and also not so many of the colours available so but it's really lovely it's got like sort of a pearlescent -ness <laughs> to it you probably can't see it very well here but it's got a, a little shimmer to it the pattern's lovely uh, I actually I didn't print it out because sometimes I feel like getting the printer out is a big deal. It's not 
even a case of getting it out it is plugging it in and then having to connect my phone to its wi-fi sometimes i think that's a big deal but it's not so what i did was write down the pattern repeat on a piece of tissue because <laughs> i didn't have any paper to hand and i was in the living room and i had a pen and a box of tissue so i just wrote it on a tissue now i think that it's a eight row repeat might be a 10 row repeat but by the end of the first sock I had it in my head so can you see there look it's got little bits that go down <laughs> so descriptive like and the rib this it starts with a pearl row again and this rib goes down into that pattern there and also the cabley bits that goes down into that as well I don't mind a pearl stitch, you know that, don't you? So they're all done, and these are for Meg, and she has got really sweet little feet, unlike my clod hoppers, and she said she loves autumn, and she said they'll be perfect for the autumn because she wears Doc Martens, and um, she likes her socks to be a bit longer when she wears those. But they're really nice. The next instalment in the pattern comes out, I think, on the 5th of July. Why is the 4th of July significant to me? Oh, it's Meg's last day at college. It's also Independence Day, isn't it? It is, isn't it? It is. Yeah, so I really like these and I do like this wool. I'd definitely use it again if I could get hold of any. It's really nice. I bought this a couple of years ago from a wool shop when I was on a day out with James. Well, it was a wool and fabric shop. And I've written down on here, see I get my veg box and we're allowed, subs not substitutions, but swaps. So in my, because I've started to get three now, in my normal vegetable box I'm having no apples or tomatoes but I'm having kiwi and bok choy as a swap and then I'm swapping beetroot for carrots in my salad box and then I get a fruit box as well but I liked everything in there I just love nectarines and peaches but they have to be rock hard if they're even a little bit soft I don't like them and I'm the same with pears as well I just like them to be like sour and unripe and bananas actually but I don't like green bananas I like them when they've just very just turned yellow and I don't like any brown marks on them at all I had a question so I might as well answer I've, I had a couple of questions I haven't got any notes today either so I'm just doing this off the top of my head so I got asked and I've, I've, I know I've already told some of you this before I got asked how old was I when I learned how to knit and who taught me? So I was actually four. So that means I've been knitting for near, it'll be 40 years this December. And my nan taught me when I was little. Um, we lived in a cul-de-sac which had a circle of grass. And it was my mum, another house and my then my nan then over the green do you call it a village green i think that's what it is over there it, it was my dad's auntie so my nan's sister and joined on to her was my dad's nan so my great nan and my nan and my auntie's mum and on a sunday um my nan's three sisters and her and all of their daughters would go round that nan's house and they'd all take their knitting bags with them and I was obsessed with looking at their stuff and what they had and it was the early 80s and Intarsia was in fashion at the time and they were all making jumpers I remember one of them making a top with jelly tots written on the back 
and these multicoloured circles now all these different strands of wool hanging down the back uh, one of them made my brother a Thomas the Tank Engine um, cardigan my mum still got that because he used to sleep in that in bed they made me a Roland Rat jumper it was grey I've, st I've got a picture of me wearing that actually one Christmas um, and they were just always knitting so my, uh, they all ended, well, it was my nan who lived next door. So if I went, wanted it to learn anything new, I remember her teaching me how to increase. Um, so if I was following a pattern and I needed to know anything, because Google wasn't about in those days or the internet full stop, I'd just go. And also books, I think, when you're learning how to knit, I think it's really hard sometimes to follow a picture, isn't it? I'd go round hers and she would show me what to do and then when I really got the bug I was round my house and my nan had been reading a magazine and she had torn out a page and it was a Jean Greenhow um, pattern and it had bumblebees, ladybirds, mice maybe something else as well and I just tried to find the book for you with that in but I can't find it anywhere it must be in the loft and I just couldn't believe that you could actually make something like that and I thought I could make that and then for my Christmas presents from then on my nan would get me another the newest Jean Greenhow leaflet with all the um, different patterns in and I made scarecrows and she did a series of Scottish um, scarecrows. I started off with a jelly baby though, because they were just one colour and quite easy. And then I liked to make baby clothes, but only in the very smallest size that you can um, you could knit them in, like naught to three. Anything bigger than that, I'd think, oh no, that's way too many stitches. And I remember looking at a pattern which was for a yoke with all the stitches and I thought I can't do that that's way too many stitches and then I also remember because I was always so desperate to get on to the next thing so if I'd knit something and it needed to be a certain length well, I remember pulling it like that so that it fit the the right measure it the the right measurements well, I don't do that anymore I was just and I remember knitting I might still have it actually a ginormous Jean Greenhow clown like that and my nan for christmas got me the pattern and all of the wool and stuffing that you needed to make it oh what a great present that was so that's how i got started it was my my nan and her sisters and my dad's cousins because they just did it and I was just fascinated by their knitting bags like they'd have because they it was all straight needles back then and I, I still love knitting on straight needles now but they'd have these long thin bags and then these cases with zips around them that you could flip open and they'd have all these lovely needles in and I remember looking in the Argos book at all the knitting stuff and they had like knitting pattern files and uh, needles and bags oh I, I was just I just loved it and all my friends would be out doing stuff and I'd be at home knitting <laughs> but I loved it and I used to take it to school <sighs> I just like making stuff and I've always liked making stuff I used to like like on Blue Peter my favorite bit was always the bit where they'd make something Have I left that light on in there I've slept funny I've woken up with a bit of a funny neck We've had a rough night, me and James, over the last, well, the last week. There's just been this mystery noise. It's horrible. And I think I heard it outside today, but I didn't hear it last night. It goes... <coughs> but in the distance. But sometimes if the wind is in the wrong direction, it makes it sound a lot louder. And the first night it started... We, you know, when you wake up and you don't know what's going on, we both got it in our head that it was like some sort of 
alarm to tell us that something really bad was going on. So I went on Facebook and I was like looking up like noise in the area that we lived in and I couldn't find anything but I I just put the fan on in the end to down that drown it out. But the other night we were sitting in bed and it just turned eleven o'clock and it just stopped. And I went, James. And he went, oh. and he said, I think I miss it because <laughs> it had stopped. Oh dear. Right, so this week I am going to finish this jumper. Oh, I am. This is my Raspberry 12, which is, I've, I've made two of these by Francesca Hughes. No, I haven't made two. This is my second. I've made one. I test knit the pattern. It's lovely. It's made from, it's supposed to be two different walls and then a bit of mohair as well or a bit of lace chucked in but I picked three different colours so I'm using this purple for the rib and then I've got this which is a Biff Sugar Yarns uh, bonfire themed one and then this which is a Green Lambkin Yarn which was her I think it was called Wheel of the Year and then I'm using this, which is, I oh, can't find it, but it's, I think it's called Drops, I don't want to say Air, I think it's Drops Kid Silk. So I'm using those three for the main bit of the jumper. <coughs> and this, which I had left over, this is a Cascade, but uh, I can't remember what it's called now, for the cuffs. And these little shoulder panels so I've made both sleeves I made those first and then I did the back and I've had the back sitting on the needles for the longest time because all I needed to do to finish the back was a few short rows at the top I can't tell you how long it's been waiting for me to do it and last night I did it in like two minutes flat do you put stuff off? Sometimes I think things are going to be a massive deal and they're not. I know how to do short rows. I don't know why I get myself in a... I don't know why I do it. Anyway, so all I've got to do now is the front. So last night, before I... Because I was itching to, to do this last night and I don't know why. So I finished off this bit and then I cast on the stitches for the front. So I'm well on the way. Now, it looks like I have got, I hope I'm going to have enough. The cuff, the, the, this is not very many rows, is it? So, I'll, yeah, that'll be enough. I'm sure I've got some more of this for the neck band. But that'll probably be enough as well, but we'll see. Now, I've done... The shoulders slightly differently now you're supposed to do keep these stitches on the needle and then do a three needle bind off but I'm not doing that I've and then cast off the neck stitches I've done it the other way around I've cast off the shoulder stitches and kept the neck stitches I don't know why I've done that but I just have <laughs> oh hopefully it'll work out I'm sure it will don't make a lot of difference really just it'll just I've got to sew it all together anyway because it's in pieces, which I like. I do think that pieced things fit nicer on me than um, stuff. Oh, Johnny's just sent me a message. Tell me, I can't see myself again. Tell me when it's safe, now I can see myself, to come home, please, he's just said. But I really like it. What I like about this, I don't know if you can see it, but when you hold it up to the light, you can really see the magic of knitting and how all of the stitches are held together. So this is what I'm going to be doing tonight. And once I um, get going with this, this will be my new book knitting. Lovely. I do like this. I like the 
random little bits of colour that are coming up. When this is blocked, it will look different as well. Um, I really like Francesca Hughes patterns. She's got so many lovely different ones. And she describes this particular pattern, or this jumper, as the first thing you put on when it gets chilly and the first thing you take off when it gets warm. And that's right, I've got one of these in pink. And that is exactly right. It's lovely for like when it's a little bit chilly. But it does make you hot. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'll sh and I forgot which size I was doing, so I had to knit um, count the amount of stitches in this um, band at the bottom, so I could work it out. And I'm doing the third size. It's a very simple design, so if you are new to knitting, even if you didn't want to do it with the colour changes and the um, like bit of lace in between you'd be able to do this, a nice little garter stitch jumper. I don't know, shall we see if I've got it done next time, Lillian? What do you reckon? We'll give it a good old crack. Oh, here she comes. Come on then. Oh, here she comes. She's had a bit of a haircut. I don't know if you've seen her since she had her haircut. Daddy's left your um, eyebrows quite long, hasn't he? She, yesterday, I think I'm gonna have to make a bit of a change to walks because um, yesterday I took Lizzie to school because she needed to be there early for that maths thing that she didn't end up going on and then I come back and got Lillian and she did walk our normal route oh, are you having a stretch? I'm just trying to think if I've um, got anything else to tell you so next week Johnny is off on a um, school trip. He's going to go and have a go at being in a kitchen of quite a posh restaurant, isn't he? Let's start to give him more responsibility at work. If they'd have seen his knives that he's brought home from his course, I, they wouldn't. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So he said, come and have a look at my knives. Because they've all, all the, the chefs on the course have got their, their own set of knives. And they're wrapped in this like really strong cream canvas. And he unrolled them. They, like the canvas was covered in blood. Where he'd been tried to get them out and cut himself. <laughs> oh dear. It's a bit clumsy, isn't he, Lillian? He'll get used to it, though. Oh, look at the baby. Are you a baby? Hey? You see what I mean about her being a spoiled only child? In the winter, she lets me um, wrap her up in a blanket, don't you? And one day, I came home from taking Lizzie to school and there was no one else in the house. And I got her in my arms like this, but a bit higher up. And I laid down on the chair and we slept for about three hours together. Oh, it was ever so nice. It was one of the nicest naps I've ever had. She's a nice old girl, aren't you? She's an old lady now. But I'll tell you what, she can still skip, can't you? Did you have some of Ian's chicken for his birthday? Did he give you some? And she couldn't stop thinking about it after. I'm just trying to think if I've got anything else that I can tell you about. I think that's it from the knitting point of view. Oh good, we're only on 38 minutes so this might be a bit shorter today. So I think that's it. Apart from the stuff that's going to be in my shop. I might put you down, Lillian, for a minute. Oh, she's all right though, isn't she? So if you're only here to hear about the stuff I've been making, I am desperate to cast on a new shawl, so I'm, and I think I might have found a, a nice pattern as well. So I might 
start a new shawl next week. But I do really want to get that jumper done. But that will be fine. As soon as I get into that, into the rhythm with that, with a book, it will go really nicely. Because I do want to wear that actually. Because I think that's going to be a really nice jumper. I know the colours probably you might think is a bit crazy. But I think they look nice. And I think that's going to be really nice. Right. So if you're only here for the knitting and the making bit. I'll say goodbye and I'll wish you very well. <laughs> right. So tomorrow. Oh, I don't know what the date's going to be. So it's going to be Thursday. Today is Wednesday. Hang on. So if Saturday was Ian's birthday and that was the 24th. 24, 25. 26, 27, 28, 29. So Thursday the 29th of June at 6pm there will be lots and lots of velvet bags going into my shop. I'm just going to put you down Lillian so that I can show everybody at home. <laughs> Why do they say that? Hello to all the boys and girls at home. What's that on? That's some sort of TV programme isn't it? Right, Lily and down you go. Yeah, there'll be some velvet bags and I'll show you some of those now. So this is, you will have seen before, I've had this in a darker blue. But now I've got it in yellow. Well, with a yellow background. I've got a bag like this in the darker blue. But there's going to be some in yellow. And some, I like this one, with this sort of taupe background. They're all lovely and floppy. I don't put anything in them other than the lining so that they stay flippy, floppy, velvety. Look at that, I love that. And there will be some little sock versions of this as well. She's stuck under there. I've got two tablecloths and she's in a muddle. Come on then, come on. Oh, she's put her brakes on. I love that. Yeah, there'll be some sock-sized ones of those as well. Oh my goodness, look who's back here. Is the elephant. So there'll be some of these lovely elephant bags. Now, the no, 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 the pattern on the back will vary. So it's all going to go as one uh, listing, but some will have the elephant on the back. Some will have these fellas here, and some will have scenery so there'll be some of these i love the elephant bags i like them all and then there will be some of these lovely peacock bags as well hello that's what i imagine she'd talk like how she would speak is that how i say that oh what lovely feathers i've got and look at this little fella around the back Oh no, that's not his voice. That's Pauline's voice. Don't mention Pauline. She still hasn't got a dress. She's been too hot anyway. And she's a naturist. Yeah, so they'll all be in there. Also in my shop at the minute, I have got this basket. That's in there at the moment, which is a lovely Liberty patchwork basket. But if you want a velvet bag, they'll be in there tomorrow, which is Thursday. What did I work it out? It was the 29th. That can't be right. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. It must be right. The 29th of June at 6pm, British summer time. Whew. I'll tell you what, it's been ever so, ever so hot. Sunday was really hot, but the night was quite all right, really. It cooled down. Um, I've got to do some cleaning in this house and sorting out. The, I've ju I just seem to have piles of stuff all over the place. So next week, I've told Meg that she can help me because she, love, she loves cleaning and organising. So she's going to help me to sort it all out. There just seems to be a lot of stuff everywhere. I like stuff, don't get me wrong. I love stuff. 
but this isn't the sort of stuff I'm talking about. I've got a bag over there full of coats which don't fit Lizzie anymore but they've still got stuff in the pockets that she needs to sort out and then I've just got I've got a pile of books that I've read that is like that it is really like that that needs to go to the charity shop but I do like looking at them because I'm quite proud of the amount on the uh, pile and then I really need to give I've got a very big double wardrobe down the end of my um, house which is where I keep a lot of my fabric and that needs a really really good sort out so I might put some fabric bundles in my shop when I've done that because they're all really good like big usable sized pieces so I might do that I've also got quite a few like craft books because I make all my patterns up myself I don't really I don't ever use books as a reference for sewing and making stuff for my shop I, I make them all up myself that was another question I had do I do kits for my little animals no I don't I don't think I ever will I don't think that's my sort of thing really um oh my advent i think i know what i'm doing now so maybe i'll tell you about that next time i think i am gonna do the bear that you dress again but i'll tell you about that next time i might not be doing as many though but there might be another choice but we'll see let's not get too ahead of things I'll, um, I've got to make a prototype of what I've got in mind and I'll go from there. Anyway, it's been lovely to see you all again. Sorry I didn't come yesterday to see you all, but I hope I've explained why. So fingers crossed, I'll see you next week unless I get too carried away with the cleaning and um, adventing. But I'll try my best. Anyway. Thanks for coming to see me again and I'll see you next time. Bye everybody!